Good Friday morning. Our first passage of this week was from the Sermon on the Mount as we meditated upon the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Yesterday, we read about the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Plain in Luke chapter 6. This morning, we read the Beatitudes found in Psalm 119. Here, we learn of the blessing that belongs to those walking in God's ways. This psalm is a beautiful picture of the true believer who's walking in the ways of the Lord. The many references to the laws of God may prove bothersome to those who live in a self-serving way, but to the genuine believer, a life of obedience to God's law, it's hand in glove to the abundant life we find in Christ. To separate obedience to God's law from salvation is to create a false faith that's foreign to scriptures like Psalm 119 and James chapter 220, which says, faith apart from works is useless. It delights my heart to find so many references to the law of God in this psalm. The 176 verses of this psalm are divided into 22 stanzas, verses if you will, verses of a song. And each one begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet, A to Z, if you will. The first stanza begins the psalm by describing the perfect believer, and it's a perfect description of Jesus Christ himself when he walked on the earth. As described in verse 3, Jesus did no wrong. He walked in the ways of God. This is our pattern as we, as we can see the blessedness of this state. As Christians, we will dread the defilement of sin, especially when we find it in our own lives. But we long to walk in the laws of God and to obey his word. As we read the Gospels and contemplate the obedience of Christ, his magnanimous compassion, and his brutal honesty that peeled back the layers of human hypocrisy, we yearn for this blessed state of heart and life. Now, while we can't enjoy sinless perfection ourselves, we should be drawn to this state of blessedness. These believers described here in Psalm 119 seek God with their whole heart. All of the worldly pleasures and attractions, they're set aside in seeking God. Day by day, year by year, the seeker calls after God in his word and in prayer. Verse four contains a statement of fact. God expects obedience. When God issues commands, he expresses more than just a desire. It, it's the way that he thinks things should be. His directives describe the behavior that he loves and the sin that he finds repulsive. While a father may forgive a child and work patiently with him through his disobedience, he's looking for the child's cooperation and follow through. It's a great delight to a father's heart when a child diligently applies himself to do what he has been asked to do. Christian friend, I suspect that you have experienced shame and guilt when you have fallen back into sinful behavior. Nobody enjoys living in a state of shame, but after the confession of sins, there's the restoration of the joy of salvation. Verse six assures us that these shameful moments lessen as we learn to walk more and more in the commands of God. Verse seven reminds us that an important part of faithful obedience is sincere worship. When our worship and praise becomes empty and routine on Sunday, it's probably because we're not walking in faithful obedience to God from Monday to Saturday. For the past two Sundays, our worship services have been rich. That's an indication that as a fellowship, we're embracing obedience. When Sunday worship seems ho-hum, that's a sign that our worship has become diluted with disobedience. This psalm reminds us of the tight connection between faithful living and sincere worship. Let's enrich our sacrifice of praise on Sunday with a week of devotion to God. Lord, it amazes me how you have blessed my life, how you've called me blessed when I deserve nothing but death. You've blessed me by forgiving my sins. Lord, help me to walk in your ways. Help me, 
Help me to keep your testimonies in a world that wants nothing to do with your commands. Father, I, I thank you that through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can walk diligently in your ways. Thank you that through the atonement of Jesus, I've been delivered from the bondage of sin and I can walk freely keeping your commandments. Lord, help me stand firm with my eyes fixed on your ways, praising you with an upright heart. Lord, help me to study your word and abide in it. Be with me as I grow in grace in a world that wants nothing to do with you. This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.